Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, I'm gonna answer your question of why am I so tired all the time and what can I do with my food to stop being so tired? So if you are new to my channel, I just wanna say welcome. I am a woman on a mission to get a million people fasting this year. Although we're talking about food, this channel really shows you how to build a fasting lifestyle where you can use fasting and food to tap into your own healing power and especially amp up your energy. So I'm excited you're here. Just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and dive in. We, I got so much information for you here and those of you that share my videos out, so grateful for you. Do a long fast one day, your blood sugar going up and down. We're in it together. This video is goes with another video, which is what is causing me to be so tired. And so I really wanted to break down tired because so many of you are telling me how easily tired you are. And there's a lot of different reasons. So I want to start pecking away at the reasons so you can figure out for yourself what might be the driving root cause behind your tiredness. So on this video, let's go through the three worst foods you could eat that will only contribute to you being more tired. So let's start with what you need to avoid. Because what I found is if we get rid of these foods and then we combine that with something as simple as 13 to 15 hours of fasting every day, your mitochondria come back online and you get that energy back. Those of you that are trying to fast and you're still tired, you've got to avoid these foods. So the first part of understanding food and its effect on your energy levels is to know what the different macros do to your blood sugar. So let's look at a carbohydrate. Part of why we villainized carbs so much is because the refined carbs, refined flours, the cakes, the cookies, the pastas, so many of those cause your blood sugar to rise very, very high. When your blood sugar goes high, as high as it goes is as low as it goes. So when you look at the st standard Western diet where people are eating oatmeal for breakfast or bagels for breakfast or s breakfast cereals, what happens is early on in the day, they're gonna get this high spike, but by 10 o'clock in the afternoon, they're gonna, or in the morning, they're gonna end up with a dip and that's gonna make them hungry and it's gonna make them tired. So the first step is to get rid of the refined carbohydrates. So the first worst food is really a category. It's get rid of all the processed, refined flours and sugars. This is even gluten-free. And you guys have probably heard me say this on other videos. You may have never heard me say it in relationship to being tired. You know, for years in my clinic, I was able to take somebody who was chronically fatigued and pull refined carbohydrates out and that one diet change alone, they would turn their, their carb focus on nature's carb, fruits, the lower fruits like berry fruits and uh, apples, those lower glycemic fruits are really nourishing for your body. They don't tend to put you on this roller coaster. Get people off, off flour, get them off the cereals, get them off the cakes, the cookies, the sweets, get them off all of that and all of a sudden their energy came back online. So that's how powerful this first step is. Okay, second step I want you to think about is protein. So protein, by the way, has less of a spike, so it's gonna have a more steady spike. Well, here's what's interesting about protein, is when we lean into things like animal protein, it provides amino acids for us, and amino acids can actually start to fuel the mitochondria inside our cells and help us make more energy. So we need enough protein. We need protein to build muscle, but we also need protein to stimulate those mitochondria so that they end up making enough ATP for us to be able to function in the world. When you look at the mitochondria in the brain, they really need amino acids because that's what's gonna help with mental clarity and so much of your mitochondrial energy is being put towards your brain function. So when we go to protein, this isn't so much a food to take out, but this is a food I want you to add in, which is 
as many different versions of animal protein as you can. If you're vegetarian, sit tight for a moment. I want you to add in and look at eggs, for example. Eggs have a lot of choline in them, which will help with brain function. I want you to look at every couple of hours in your eating window, are you leaning into some proteins? Like I do rolled up turkey all the time, or I'll do uh, slices of anti antibiotic free uh, salami. I do Paleo Valley's beef sticks. Those are my go-to throughout the day. Now, when we do protein, we want to do them in small amounts throughout the day so that they keep our blood sugar more stable and give us more energy. So the thing you want to avoid with protein, and especially when we look at a fasting lifestyle, is that when we're compressing our eating window, and then all of a sudden we put 150 grams of protein into a one hour eating window, that's overload for the system. So you, when you're doing protein, make sure it's clean, free of antibiotics, hormones, make sure you're varying your protein, and then make sure you're divvying that protein up throughout the day, not like one big steak sitting down to a meal at night. That would be, cause you more fatigue. You're gonna have a big spike and then you're gonna have a crash. For those of you that are vegetarian, you're definitely with protein. You wanna lean into more of like the hemp seeds, the chia seeds, quinoa has a lot of protein in it. Of course, mixing quinoa with beans and adding a good fat in there will stabilize this, your blood sugars as, as well. And for vegetarians, I really recommend an amino acid supplement. Um, so, and we'll put links in the, the notes here so you can see my favorite one. Okay, last, food I want you to think about when it comes to fatigue, and that's fat. So again, when we go into the bad fats, we don't necessarily get the right glucose and insulin response. A good fat, like an avocado, when you eat an avocado, it shouldn't, it shouldn't do anything to your, to your blood sugar. Your blood sugar should st stay stable, like this blue line right here. So when we eat soybean oil or we eat canola oil or, or cottonseed oil or corn oil, you're gonna have more of a response like you do with a carbohydrate. So when we look at fats, the trick here for energy and to, bring you, to get you out of this easily tired space is that we've got to lean into more good fats and avoid the bad ones. I literally, when I go out to dinner with my functional medicine doctors and we're navigating a menu, we seriously, the number one thing we look for, we even tell the waiter that we are allergic to canola oil. We cannot do canola oil. They wanna put canola oil in everything. And that is gonna be one of those food categories that is going to create this response for you. So when you go out to eat, what you wanna look at is what is the quality of the oil that they're serving you because a toxic oil is gonna give you a blood sugar response as high and low as a carbohydrate. So let me summarize this because those of you that have been around on my channel for a while, this is the next level information I want you to know so you can keep your energy up, you can get a lot out of your fasting lifestyle. If you're brand new to my channel, you might be like, whoa, that was a lot of information. I don't really know what to do with it. So let me summarize it for you. Carbs, we want nature's carbs. We don't want man-made carbs. Protein, we want clean proteins and we want small amounts of protein throughout the day. Ideally 20 to 30 grams throughout yet each little meal every couple hours is best. And when it comes to fat, we wanna add in the good fat and take out the bad fat. When you do those three things and you pair it with even something as simple as intermittent fasting, 13 hours of fasting, your energy should go through the roof. If it doesn't, then go back to the, to the video that I did showing the different reasons that energy tanks because you might need to brainstorm for yourself what one of those four things I talked about in that video what, which one may be depleting your energy. But this is like basic, like everybody should be doing this type of nutrition. It doesn't matter if you're vegan or carnivore or what your nutritional habits are. If you wanna bring your energy up, these are the three steps that will greatly impact blood sugar level and make it much easier for you. So 
As always, I hope that helps. Let me know if you found that helpful. Put it in the comments. If you need more clarification on anything I said, I went into the nuance on this. I went into the details. So just put your question in there and we'll make sure that we answer it. If you want to master this, then come on into my academy and we will, uh, this is where we're teaching people how to build a fasting lifestyle and uniquely to you. You all have your own path with this fasting lifestyle. So I really want to help you find it. As always, I hope that helps.